Sourness, umami, crunchiness. Lacto-fermented pickles are the perfect accoutrement to any dish. Today, I'm gonna to be covering the Noma Guide to lacto-fermenting in a brine, or simply put, pickling. And the coolest thing about this process is that it can be used to pickle almost any fruit or vegetable, and it's really up to you to just experiment and see with what you like. So pickles use lactic acid bacteria for their fermentation. And if you guys want a more sciencey breakdown of that, I did that in my lacto blueberry video where we walk through the process of like the molecules and changing to what actually goes on. At its most basic though, lactic acid bacteria turn sugar into acid, giving lacto fermentation that signature sourness. In that video, we talked about the basic process, which is weigh your ingredients, add 2% salt by weight, and then wait and let them ferment. It's really all there is to it. While those same principles apply to pickling in a brine, there are some slight variations that I wanna walk through. So we're gonna be doing that with the OG pickling vegetable, the cucumber. So a preliminary step is to prepare your vegetable. You wanna avoid fruits or vegetables that have been coated in wax or treated with pesticides. And you wanna avoid these because they may not have a healthy population of that lactic acid bacteria that we need for the fermentation to occur. Noma suggests buying organic to ensure a healthy population of LAB exists, and you want it to be free of any visible dirt or grime, but just give it a light rinse under some water. Definitely do not scrub clean your vegetables. Anyways, now that you have your vegetable or fruit of choice prepped with a thriving LAB metropolis, let's learn the process for pickling. Place an empty crock or jar in a scale and tare or zero it. Now fit your vegetables snugly into the vessel. And if you want to add any additional spices, you can here. I'm keeping mine plain for the basic version, but we'll show you some experiments that I tried after we go through this one. Add enough water to completely submerge the vegetables and note that weight down. Mine was 414 grams. Calculate 2% of that weight and weigh out that much salt into a bowl. You can now pour the water out from the vessel and mix the salt in until it completely dissolves. Pour your saline solution back over the vegetables. Now you can lightly screw on the cap, allowing nothing to enter, but loose enough that gases produced from fermentation can still escape. And for my kind of cue of what I like to do is just take two fingers and if I can easily unscrew that with just two fingers and not much pressure, that's about the right level of tightness for me. And one last note about screwing these tight is that you wanna make sure your vegetables are below the water level to ensure that's an anaerobic environment, basically without oxygen. If there are vegetables that are above the water level, they are open to oxygen and that is when things like mold can start to occur. So if you have a pickling jar, you may not need to put anything above. Like you can see mine in this, all the vegetables are below the water level. But if you have a jar like this where it's all straight up and some of those vegetables can definitely float above the water level, I took just an upside down peanut butter lid that was left over and I just dipped it down in front. So then that's gonna keep everything below that water level to make sure we don't get any mold or things like that. Another good method is to just fill a Ziploc bag with water and put it on top of your vegetables or fruits or whatever you're doing. And then the gas can get out, but nothing will really be able to get in and it'll keep everything below that water line to make sure it's an anaerobic environment. And also you guys probably will start to get a little bit of carbonation. This is about three days after. And for some reason, these beets and garlic must have been very active with lactic acid bacteria because they are just, there's so much carbonation coming out. It's, it's crazy. Um, but you guys probably will get some. And like I said, you can just burp it and let it go and then just let this kind of breathe off. I mean, unless you like the carbonation in there, like a soda or something, but um, you just want to burp it in that case and, and you guys will be good to go. But let's get back to finishing the process. Now it is time to wait. Normally just leave them at room temperature, though Noma does their ferments at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can ferment in the fridge, though the process will be much, much slower. If fermenting at room temperature, you just want to make sure it's out of direct sunlight and you want to start checking on the pickles after two to three days and monitor their progress for sourness. Once the pickles have reached the desired sourness, move to the fridge, screw that cap on tight, and it will store in the brine for several months for you to enjoy. 
Lacto-fermenting pickles is really as basic as that. And now that we have that basic process down, there are a couple more sections that I wanna cover about different variations and things to consider when doing lacto-fermentation. In short, you can really try any vegetable or fruit that you want to. And Noma suggests looking for things that are tasty when they're raw and juicy, but not really mushy. Cucumber, for example, great when raw and juicy, but it's still crunchy. Other vegetables that I picked out to do were some onions and poblano peppers. I did beets and garlic. And then for my last one, I did carrots, celery, bell pepper, onion, serrano chili, and spices, which brings me to our next topic. So one of the fun things that you can do with your lacto-fermented pickles is start adding different spices and flavor combinations to your base vegetable. You like spices, try adding a chili to your vegetables. If you want some aromatics, bay leaves are a good option. And how about some spices? Peppercorns, mustard seeds, Cuban seeds, it's really up to you. For me, I wanted to try a rift on fermented Chicago style hot giardinara. I took the carrots, celery, bell pepper, and onion. Then I added a diced chili, garlic, some oregano, and peppercorns. I added all of these in step two and then poured in the water and continue as normal. So last up is food safety, everyone's favorite topic when it comes to fermentation. You can clean your fermentation vessels by running it through a cycle of your dishwasher, or if that's not possible, you can disinfect and clean with some vinegar. You don't need to sterilize your jars or anything like that for lacto-fermentation, because that would be like setting off a nuclear bomb and destroying all the microorganism life, which is really what we need for this lacto-fermentation to occur. You know, we need that bacteria so it can turn that sugar into sour. For lacto-fermentation, you don't need gloves to handle. Obviously, make sure they are clean of any visible dirt and grime. But since LAB naturally exists on our skin, there is no need to use gloves as that can actually help the LAB population thrive. So mold is generally fuzzy in appearance and it will show up in spots and can be in a variety of different colors. And the number one rule is if in doubt, just throw it out. Seriously guys, the risk is really not worth it. That being said, there is something called calm yeast that can sometimes show up across a single layer on top of your fermentation. And if you do get calm yeast, I'll leave a link in the description below where you guys can look at how to identify calm yeast. If you do get that, it can be skimmed off and then you can safely eat your fermented foods. But in general, if you are worried and you're not sure, just throw it out, don't worry about it. I mean, this stuff's not like it's expensive to make. Yeah, it takes time, but it's really just salt, water, and vegetables. You can make another batch and it'll turn out great. And this also goes to show the importance of using the correct salt percentages for this. So if it says 2%, make sure you're using 2% or above because that was calculated to use and to prevent unwanted microbes from getting in here that can cause mold. But for myself, especially with lacto ferments, I don't think I've ever gotten mold. Um, knock on wood, I might get mold this time around. But seriously guys, just be safe, use your best judgment, and it'll be all right. Naturally, when home fermentation comes up, someone is ready to say botulism. So let's talk about some botulism facts. Clostridium botulinum, the bacteria that causes botulism, thrives in the absence of oxygen. Sounds pretty similar to LAB, right? Well, here's the huge difference. Clostridium botulinum struggles in the presence of salt or acid. Both exist in our lacto-fermentation through salt and the LAB turning sugar to acetic acid. And according to the USDA, Clostridium botulinum cannot grow in pH lower than 4.6. So if you wanna be extra careful, you can use a pH meter to test your solution before trying your pickles. Also, botulism is relatively rare. In the 2017 CDC National Botulism Surveillance, there were 182 confirmed lab cases in the US with just 19 or 10% of them being foodborne. So botulism is a really serious disease and can be fatal. However, we are taking the right precautions, and in my mind, there's nothing to be afraid of with botulism, but it is definitely something to respect. 
So I think I have covered all of the basic knowledge that you guys need to lacto ferment some pickles. But if you guys have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And if you guys do try out some pickle creations, definitely send them to me on Instagram, would love to see. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.